Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today on Glowforge to the Point series, we're going to be making your first 3D design. This is going to be the slot tester. Uh, this is going to be the same design that was in the last video on how to find your curve. I basically labeled everything how I have it for my material size and how my curve works with my material. And we're going to be using four tools today. We're going to be using the rectangle tool, the ang uh, the align tool the Unite tool, and the Direct Selection tool. So that's all we're going to need to create this design. I'm going to show you how to create it. And uh, this will give you a more of a implementation of that last video for Curf as well. As you can see, this is going to be the tab um, file. This is going to be the top. That's going to go into the slot. And uh, as you can see, we have it set at 0.75 for the tab and 0.75. 737 for the slot here and that's the difference of curve in that last video there so if you need some more information on how to find your curve go back to the last episode and uh, re-watch that episode there so we're gonna go ahead and get started we're gonna start with our rectangle tool here we're gonna create basically four rectangles to create this design here um, so right over here on the left hand side is your rectangle tool we're gonna select that now you can either drag and drop and to create your um, rectangle and you want to make sure you have no fill and then add a stroke. And once you have your rectangle created, you can then um, either drag and drop to resize or you can be more specific like we're going to do. You can do it in this top right corner to change your width and height. So for example, if I increase that or decrease it, it's going to change the width. Same with the height. Um, so that's one way that you can do it. Another way is on the rectangle tool. All you got to do is click once, and it will pull up this little menu here, and you can manually type in the width and height to be accurate right off the bat. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and type in this first number here. It's going to be 0 0.6372, and then the height is going to be 1.25. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to delete this first rectangle that I used just for an example to introduce you to that tool. So now that we have this selected, uh, as you can see, it fits over that perfectly. And I'm going to get to the curved edges in just a second here. I just wanted to show you that's essentially what we're going to do. I'm going to create these other three rectangles and we're going to go from there and I'll explain along the way. So I'm going to create those really quick. The next one is right over here. It's 0 0.2 and what that 0 0.2 is is that is the width of our material so if you have a shorter width or a longer width you're going to type in the width of your material right there and then the height is going to be just any height that your tab has to be so 0 0.75 is my tab height I'm going to click OK and then we'll um, use the align tool in just a second and we're going to line these up here I'm going to create these last two really quick now that you know what's going on there. 1.25 by 1.25. This is going to be our outside. And then we're going to do one more. This is going to be the inside slot. And that's going to be 0 0.2, the width of the material. And then 0 0.737. This is going to be your tab size minus your curve from the last video. So like I said, you need a brush up on curve watch that last video we're going to click ok so now that we have all of these four rectangles created we are now going to create the design and just for um, to match this i'm going to change this color to a light blue just so you can see that i'm matching this up so now that we um, basically crossed off the rectangle tool we've done that now we need to align our projects here so if you highlight these two together and if you have the align tab over here, then you can use this right right away. If you don't, you're going to click on window and you're going to click on align and that will pop up in a big pop up window. So once you have the align tool pulled up, I'm going to align it horizontally and I'm going to align it vertically. It looks like I had it pretty well set there. So that's good. Now, this one you can see is definitely offset. I'm going to go ahead and just align that vertically. 
And um, let's say if you had a space here, we're just going to space it out a little bit. All we're going to do here is let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see what's going on. So we're going to grab the edge of this, and this is just the standard selection tool you'll always use. Uh, you'll grab the edge, and then you can drag it right over top of this, um, this point here. If you're having issues for it connecting, try holding down your control key until it says path, just like that. Then you can let go. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out here for you. So now that it's connected, we're going to make sure that is aligned still, and it is. So now that we have the alignment tool done, we're going to go to Unite. So Unite is under the Pathfinder tool. So I have mine set up where Pathfinder is right here. You can click on that tab and you get a whole new set of um, tools here under Pathfinder. So if you don't have Pathfinder over there, same thing as before. You'll go up to Window on the top and then you'll click on Pathfinder and the same pop up like a line will pop up for you. Um, so with the Pathfinder, we're going to select that. This first button here is Unite. As you can see, as I hover over it, it says Unite. We're going to click that with both of them highlighted, and that's going to create one shape there. As you can see, it's all one shape now. You officially have the start of both of these created. So now that we're done with the Unite tool, we're going to go ahead and go to the Direct Selection tool to create our edges. So once you have Direct Selection selected, all you got to do is click once on this uh, endpoint here, hold shift, and then click on this endpoint here so you have both selected. The shift button just allows you to select more than one point. Then you can let go of shift, and once you have both points selected, you'll see this little uh, node here that you can grab, and you can see that it's going to create um, like curved edges, and you can set it to whatever um, amount you want. I'm going to go ahead and just set it on 0.25 uh, that I might have done bigger over here, but it's the same difference. So if you want more of a curve, you'll just pull it down more. If you want less of a curve, you'll pull it down less. And that's all you got to do. I'm going to just go with 0.25. And then um, with you'll use the same direct selection tool. You'll just click on your square here. And you can do the same thing where you hold shift and you click all four points. And then you can uh, box this in however you want. I'm going to go with that same 0.25, just like that. And there you have it. Um, you can also group this if you want. That way, if you move the outside. So, for example, if you move the outside, it's going to move by itself. Let me undo that. If you highlight both of these, go up to Object and hit Group. Now you can move it all together. Just a quick extra tip there. So that's pretty much it, you guys. That is how you create your first 3D design and how you create your slot tester. So um, this is basically going to go into that tab, and it's going to stand straight up like that last video. Let me zoom in really quick to show you what's going on with the curve, too. As you can see, since this uh, slot in the inside here is smaller than the tab, you can see a little bit of an overlap, and that's what we want for the curve. That way... Whenever the laser cuts this out and the laser cuts this one out as well, they're going to match up and be nice and tight fit for you. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out one more time and kind of explain this lastly really quick. There we go. And then um, lastly, before you go, if you want to create this for your own material, so let's say, for example, you have a skinnier material, um, you would just change the inside width of this. And you're going to also change the height of this as well. So, for example, let's say your material is um, 1, 2, 5 for an eighth inch. You would change that there to 1, 2, 5. So, basically, you would go in here and you would change this to 1, 2, 5. There we go. And that would be your new width of your material. Your kerf usually is the same for the height, um, but like I said, you can go back through the video and you can adjust this, and this is the easiest way to test your material. You would have to do the same thing here as well. This one's a little bit trickier because you would actually have to change um, the inside width here. So if you have to change the inside, I would suggest just starting completely over with this piece, just like we did with the rectangle tools and unite them together, and that way you have the new piece. 
But that's pretty much it, you guys. That's how you would create the 3D design using Curve with slots and tabs. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you guys next time.